Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 259 of the Spearhead Sunnies podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm ready for war. Are you? Are you ready? We're going to be conscripted. I'll see you on the front lines. Oh, man, what a great day. I'm recording this on a, on a Thursday, the day that Buy Monthly Bull dropped. What a great day to drop a fucking episode all about current news that doesn't even mention Ukraine or Russia on the day that they fucking invade. What a great day for me. Hey, guys, do you want to... Hey, I know that, that World War Three is about to start, but would you like to hear about every single other story instead? <laughs> Let me just take your mind off the news by presenting the only news that no one gives a fuck about right now. (laughs) Well, really great. If Putin, I'm going to give Putin a spray. I'm going to call him up and say, could you not have delayed that? Did you do that on purpose to tank my video? Huh? You trying to affect my reach on YouTube? No one wants, I've spent fucking a whole week on that thing. I wrote it over days. Rosie spent days editing it. We shot it beautifully. We, we rebranded it. We made new graphics. We put it out talking about fucking, oh, Kanye West is that Ukraine is on fire. I'm talking about Kanye West's new album. I look like an idiot. So that's why today I've decided to enlist. Oh, no. Not that I need to, you know, that, that decision is going to be made for us, isn't it? You know, what's, uh, what's, what, what's, uh, what's, you know, I would like to know what's your, what's your decision, guys, everyone watching this, uh, I would, I would love you for you to comment. What do you reckon? Frontline or prison for desertion? (laughs) What do you reckon? I'm feeling, I'm feeling a very strong prison on this one. I don't want to fight Russia in a war. I don't want to do that shit. I feel like, uh. Yeah, we did it in modern warfare. I was, I mean, I played Russia. I had to kill a bunch of people in an airport. <laughs> you know, I don't want to do that. I'd rather sit in a nice, comfortable cell. I, I, I visited prison once. It seems nice. You know, hanging out. I mean, you got to hang out with the rapists and the murderers. But other than that, you know, I mean, fuck, I've been to an open mic night. <laughs> Like, I don't know, man. I feel like that, no, I, I don't know if we can have another world war. Are we going to have one? Do you know what I mean? Like, I think so. you reckon we've got one in us? Yeah, yeah. You think we could do it? I feel I'm like busy, that I'm you're busy. you're busy. <laughs> yeah. What are you, are you enlisting or prison? Prison. Prison? Like that. Yeah. No, I'd rather just like hide away and get arrested. Hey, like, look. It's exciting. Right yeah, you wouldn't hand yourself in. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I I feel like who actually got in trouble long term going to prison instead, right? Everyone who went to prison instead of going to Vietnam actually were vindicated in the end, right? But that was because we were invading a small little like jungle, right? So that was out. We were the ba- we were Russia in that situation. But they were looked down upon for like decades after the war. But so were the vets were looked down upon. Yeah, all the vets were looked down upon. So all the people who went to prison didn't didn't fucking Muhammad Ali almost go to prison because he got conscripted and he said he wasn't going to go. He was like, "I'm not fucking going. I've got no problem with those people. Uh, why would I fight a white man's war when they've tried to fucking oppress my people for so long?" That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm going to take a leaf out of Muhammad Ali's book and I'm going to go. Why would I fight a white man's war? You know. I don't know. It's an. In, it's a very. It's a. It's crazy watching like such a historical event unfold in real time on TikTok. Like that's fucking mental. If have, have you seen Washington Post TikTok? I'm going to do a video on it in a couple of days. The Washington Post are doing TikToks, and it's a news organization. But it's just some bitch wearing a blazer, literally dancing to headlines. But the headlines are like. 3,000 troops deployed, and she seems, like, stoked about it. She's, like, real... Like, I don't, I don't know if we should be dancing while Russia annexes a, a country using airstrikes, you know? That's, that's, I reckon that's a very... Why don't you just say it? What's wrong with presenting the news from a desk? You know, like an adult. Instead of putting on a fucking blazer from home, dancing to what is, uh, you know... Hundreds of thousands of lives being destroyed and taken over by, host- by a hostile neighboring country. You know? 
Why do, does that need to be danced to? Does that need a backing track? I mean, that's how we all f- found out about Myanmar, so maybe it does. Maybe that's how bad our attention span's gotten, is like, yeah, 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 I know this shit might uh, ir- irrevocably change the course of my life, but I'm not going to pay attention to it unless you put it to the baby. you know? <laughs> uh, so what I, what I have here is it's what's particularly nuts about... Uh, all of this kind of stuff is uh, I have up here on my phone. You can just watch a live stream of like Ukraine getting invaded. It's just a fucking live stream on YouTube of, of security cameras and border cams and all this kind of stuff of just Ukraine getting invaded. It's uh, really interesting. You can just watch that shit in real time and kind of feel detached from it. Like it's not happening at all. Um, yeah, so I think that's I think that's crazy. I don't know what's gonna happen. You know, I love I but I do love seeing Scott Morrison try and and you know join in. I feel like we're really like the little the little kid, the friend of the bully. You know, Joe Biden gets out there, they they fucking injected him with caffeine to keep his brain working for the forty seconds he needed to deliver a threat to Putin. He's like, Putin, we're gonna what are we doing? Oh, they invaded Ukraine? Oh, you already told me that. Putin, if you don't stop that, the, he, what did he, he basically gave the fucking the same speech that uh, Jesse Slaughter's dad did. That's a real deep cut 4chan reference. The consequences will never be the same. Russia? But then he very pointedly made a, made a point to say, all, all of the Western allies are prepared to defend with military force any member of NATO. Guess who's not a member of NATO? Ukraine, baby. So Joe Biden came out yesterday and said, hey, Russia, if you invade any country in the world other than Ukraine, we'll kill you. And then what Russia heard was, hey, go ahead. We're not going to do shit. We'll put some sanctions on, on you. Oh, no. Some sanctions. We're going to lose a little bit of money and gain the entire GDP output of an entire country. Boo-hoo. I'll take that deal. Didn't Joe Biden just not say anything? He, he just goes, oh, I'll say more tomorrow. Yeah, I, uh, Joe Biden, I don't know. I feel like uh, there's not, what, what can you do? What are you going to do? Go to war with Russia? Do you know this is exactly how World War II started with Germany? It's exactly the same. Where Germany started building up their military and England, who, who was the America at the time, was like, hey, don't do that. And they were like, we're going to do it anyway. And they were like, all right, but don't invade the country next to you. And they were like, we're going to do that. And they were like, all right, but don't invade the country next to the country that you just invaded. And they were like, we're going to do that. And they were like, all right, but don't. And then they just kept doing it. And then they took over half the planet before everyone was like, maybe we should do something about this. So that's literally how uh, World War II started. So maybe this is World War Three. It's pretty crazy to have like the the live feed of news happening right now and also the perspective of the previous two world wars like even like after world war 1 it was relatively soon after world war 2 started but then there hasn't been a world war obviously for so long and we've got the internet so we we are all a lot smarter and we we i hope that we've learned i mean what the fuck am i saying we've learned nothing russia's invading ukraine I'm like, oh, hopefully we've learned, but then fucking 30 seconds I was, uh, ago I just said, this is exactly how World War II started. So maybe we have it, you know? I don't know. It's uh, scary times, and I guess Ukraine's just fucked, you know? Like the, sorry, I guess uh, that part of Russia is just fucked, you know? What, what, what do you think they're going to rename it? Do you reckon Putin's going to go there and they'll be like, let's make this, let's make this red? Because it's a commun Yeah, that was a good joke. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm choose i I would love to know your, your thoughts in the comment section. Conscription happens. What do you what do you reckon? Frontline or prison? I'm honestly feeling prison, although, how's this? And this might be my uh degrade celeb status speaking. If they were like, hey man, 
The troops are going to need some entertainment for morale. I might have to chase the bag on that one. <laughs> I might if if they're going to put me on a base away from the front line, I get to avoid prison and get paid and entertain the boys. I might have to chase the bag there, you know? As anti-war as I am, I love a good gig. And there's there's nothing there's there is no better gig than performing for 500 boys who have watched their friends die, you know? They're like, oh, yeah, finally, all this PC shit's gone. I can have a laugh, you know? Because that's one, that's one benefit of war. All of a sudden, no one... I, actually, there's actually a big resurgence of racism. <laughs> so maybe that's not a benefit, but what I'm saying is it loosens the rules a little bit when it comes to joking, you know? Have you, have you seen fucking Looney Tunes back in World War II? They put propaganda and racism into a children's cartoon. I mean, that was in every children's cartoon anyway, but, you know, they went a little bit harder than they needed to. Hard to be racist against Russians, though, isn't it? You know, because they're just like other white guys. What do you do with that? You can't do much with that without insulting your own, you know? I'm sure we'll find a way. You know what? We'll get the propagandists onto it. That's what we need, a good bit of propaganda. I do think that the the feeling, like, looking at everything, like, everyone's like, uh, oh, we don't want to fuck with Russia, you know? All all Joe Biden, and even Joe Biden's come out and said that. And like, if, if, you, if you invade a country that you said that you weren't going to invade and have no intentions to invade, there will be consequences. But if you invade the country that you're planning to invade, I'm going to do nothing. Right. So if you if you t- if you stop me from stealing this country, consequences will never be the same. Right. That's fucking scary, dude. That's a very scary thing to hear. I've been reading, right? This is Thursday. By the time this episode comes out, Ukraine's probably been turned into glass, right? But <laughs> but at the moment, Ukraine's only shot down a few jets. Uh so it's like a full it's war. That's a full-on war. This isn't just like a a hostile takeover. Ukraine's fighting back and shooting down jets, or at least they say, you know. Uh, and I, I love like what what Australia is doing. You know, Skomo's going. Oh, we're going to assist Ukraine. Our cyber warfare unit is going to assist Ukraine. What, what are we going to do? DDoS them? <laughs> you know, the Ru- the Russian troops will be on the front line just kicking down doors. You know, they'll open up their laptops and go. Oh, I can't post about it on TikTok. Because my internet's not working. How terrible. I'm pretty sure that the last thing you really need in an active war zone is the internet. And 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 also, how the fuck are we going to hack them from here? You know? Like Joe Biden's like, if you, if you invade, we're going to destroy you. We're, we're putting sanctions on. We're going to economically limit your nation. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stop doing business with your banks. You know what actually what made me go, huh? Should they have told us that? Yeah. What made me go, should they have told us that was when they released like how they were gonna punish Russia, right? I felt like I they accidentally let us see a little bit too far in how the world works when they said this. They said we're going to put economic sanctions on Russia. Of course, that makes sense. You know, stop doing as much business with them, not trading all that all that shit, right? That makes sense. That's standard. And then they went, we're going to stop doing business with a bunch of Russian banks. That also makes sense, right? That will limit Russia economically. But then he goes, we're also going to stop working with certain elite families uh, and elites in Russia. And I was like, Who's that? Who who was the American government working with? What what elite families are we talking about here? What elites are up there with Russian banks and just general global economy and trading? Who were who, I'm sorry, who were you talking about? Could you imagine if Russia was like, "All right, because uh, USA won't get their military bases out of Vietnam, 
we're no longer going to do business with Jeffrey Epstein. I'd be like, who's that guy? Who, Mr. Who is that? Who are you talking about? Who are those elite families that we were doing so much business with that ceasing to do that business is going to harm Russia like as an economy? Who's that? Bill, like, who's the Russian Bill Gates, you know? President Putin's response, actions demand a firm response. This is Joe Biden's Twitter. This is why we're imposing full blocking sanctions on VEB and Russia's military bank, right? That's great. Okay. Cutting off Russia from Western financing. Yes, that makes sense. Imposing sanctions on elites. <laughs> what? Who's that? Who is the, who are you talking about, Biden? Who's that guy? Imposing sanctions on elites. Who are you talking about? Vitalik Buterin? Who's that? I don't know. I read that and I was like, who the fuck is he talking about? It seems very strange that like ceasing to do business with a couple of guys is like a big consequence for Russia. You know, might that, you know, that might set a few conspiracy theorists off. Fucking crazy. That is that what that was the, the main thing that made me go, hmm. America's doing business with elites. What's going on there? Is that one of those? Maybe, maybe that's why they killed that guy that was finding girls for Epstein. <laughs> maybe that's who they were talking about. They got a little heads up that, that Ukraine was about to get invaded, so they fucking killed Epstein's mate in prison. You guys hear about that? You know, speaking of some more news from two weeks ago that no one gives a fuck about because of Ukraine. One of the one of the guys that uh, was allegedly uh, like a talent scout, which is a gross way to describe him, but that's what the news is saying. You know, that, you know that's that's uh, that's very uh, telling of the mainstream media to call a guy who procured underage sex slaves a talent scout. Thanks, CNN, for that one. Uh, but he hung himself in prison, uh, and also the security cameras didn't weren't working at that time. Oops, another little oopsie there. So that's great. Um, is there anything else uh, worth mentioning with this Ukraine stuff? My, dude, yesterday, stroke of genius from me. <laughs> people always think, I like, sometimes a lot of people ask me, especially in person, they go, man, can you teach me how to trade cryptocurrency? And here's my biggest tip. Be lucky. <laughs> I sold like almost everything last night because I felt like it. And... I felt like it. I was like, I feel like, I don't know that the look, maybe the Ukraine th shit was like, oh yeah, the Russia shit looks a little bit hot. I'm going to sell everything. And man, I, if, if I didn't do that, this would be a very sad episode. I'd be having a very sad episode of the Spirits on his podcast. So, you know, just another day in, uh, in Lewis, Warren Buffett Spears' life. Really great stuff. There's, there's nothing better than being in a cryptocurrency group chat and seeing your friends post their losses. <laughs> loved, loved, just loved. You know when you're in a group chat and uh, you can just reply to your own messages? The best feeling in the world is, is scrolling up to where your friend called you a fucking idiot, replying to it and going, am I? <laughs> Two days later. Really good feeling. Um but yeah, I'm I'm actually feeling quite good today. Well, I'm feeling right quite good currently because I just woke up from like a like a really good floor nap, you know. <laughs> uh, before you got here, I was uh, asleep on the floor. In here. Uh, no, in there. Oh, I I finished shooting something with Rosie, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna go inside and uh, and and grab a glass of water. And then I lay down on the floor and I fell asleep for like 20 minutes <laughs> because uh, the dog collar that I was wearing ran out of battery last night. So I, so I didn't, so I, instead of sleeping, I just suffocated for eight hours without realizing. And then, and then at about 4 PM, my skull started hurting and I fell asleep on the floor living, living life. Maybe I, maybe that's how I get out of conscription. Oh, I can't fall. I can't, I can't fire a gun. I'm sleepy. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe I shouldn't get my face fixed this year. Just in case. Probably a good idea. Can someone with braces go to war? Maybe I should get my braces. I'm going to Google it. This could be my out, you know? Let's all 
together as a team at Luke and Lewis get adult braces. Can you get enlisted with braces? Surely not, because they need regular medical attention, right? You cannot be deployed if you're still in braces. Let's go! All right. I hope you guys enjoy your frontline experience. I'll be at home wearing my braces, you know? All these people making fun of me for being an adult with braces. Hey, man, at least I won't be an adult in the ground. <laughs> also, I can't... I would be a useless soldier. I can't even drive a car. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> This is great. All of the choice, all of the poor choices I've made, and and the way that my head is shaped is really working in my favour. I thought this was a bad thing. I actually have something to say about you not having a license. Yeah. I lost my license. Okay. What? My license. Well, what? How am I going to get around? That's <laughs> unacceptable. You can't lose your license. Are you kidding me? That's irresponsible. What am I going to do? How is this going to affect me? How are we going to get to? How are we going to get to work to, to <laughs> Richmond on the train? It's an hour and 40 minutes. Okay, all right. Well, I didn't lose it. My license expired. Okay. And I couldn't afford to pay for my full license. So I just don't have a license at the moment. You right. You currently have a more official license than I do. That's... Let's go, baby. My me. recently renewed learner's permit is worth more than your expired license. Yeah. You fucking loser. <laughs> get your license. How the tables have turned. Hey, Keelan, get your license. You fucking loser. I haven't been driving anywhere this week. Right. I'm sure you haven't. I haven't. I'm sure you haven't. I walked here. You walked here. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, That you, why would you drive here? It's a quick walk. Have you been driving here? And that's a little insight into Keelan's mind. Want to live around the corner? I'm going to drive. Yeah, anyway, man. Get your fucking license, <laughs> all right? I'm going to be great on Saturday. Yeah. Can I borrow $100? No. <laughs> I, I, I lied. I didn't sell everything. I'm ruined! Um, no, look. Here's the thing, guys. I'm excited to be enlisted. How long have we been going here? Uh, 23 minutes. Okay, it's almost time for miscellaneous bit at the end. All right. Um, oh, yeah. Speaking of fucking in the speaking of fucking in the car, me and Keelan had a great night. <laughs> speaking of being in the car. Um, hey, thanks so much to everyone who came out to Luke, Lewis, and Friends, or as I like to call it, Lewis and Luke's Friends. Uh, it's a regular comedy night that we've started in Melbourne, uh, and it was amazing. We did the first night at Fortress Esports Bar. Uh, which is hilarious that that you know as soon as I as soon as I pitched the idea to Luke that we should do it uh, at an esports bar he as soon as he said esports he started to scream no but then I said bar and he was like all right I'm in uh, it's actually as lame as it sounds it's a really cool venue um, it's like uh, yeah it's like someone made an internet cafe fucking cool and interesting to hang out in that sounds even worse um, it's like someone. You know, here, here it is. It's like someone made a really cool bar with really good food and then in one of the corners they put a few computers in it. That's the best way to explain it. it no, it is a really cool spot. It's like right in the CBD. Uh, it's in the Emporium, which is right next to Melbourne Central. And uh, we started up Comedy Room there. The, the tickets actually to the next one are on sale right now. Luke Lewis and Friends, uh, they're on sale right now. The At LukeandLewis.shop. The first one went off. It was... So great! I've I've wanted to have like a like a regular comedy space in Melbourne for so long because it is pretty hard to get good gigs for paying audiences that want to see like real good stand up comedy um, because a lot of the gigs in Melbourne are like they're either like open mic nights and you're performing in front of like heaps of comedians and maybe two audience members and they're really grim. Uh, the comic lounge is really good, but it is an older crowd, so sometimes you know. For some reason, the mums and dads don't really like the pedophile humour that I bring, uh, which is strange. Uh, you know, <laughs> that makes me think about my kid. Um, but the th this was a great, like, young crowd. There were fans of Luke and I, but there were just fans of stand up in general. And it was a it's a lineup show, so every comic is doing like 15 minutes, and then Luke and I will close each bracket doing 20 minutes each by ourselves. We don't perform together, um, and it was awesome, man. I got to try all my new stuff. I got to do all my real dark stuff, and it 
went really well because we did the two trial shows the weekend before that. And man, some of my, the problem with the type of humor that I like is that always whenever I perform it for the first few times, it, it like exclusively pisses people off. <laughs> and then it becomes funny after about a month of doing that. So I, so I used the trial shows to, to, to j just piss people off. And I finally got it like funny. Uh, on that Saturday night, so at the Luke Lewis and Friends one. So that was awesome, really good. I now know that my Melbourne Comedy Festival show is going to be fucking sick. I'm not going to lie. I was freaked out about it. I didn't know if I'd be able to write a good hour. Now I'm like, oh, I definitely, definitely have it. So come down to Luke Lewis and Friends, uh, lukeandlewis.shop uh, for that, and come see me at the Comedy Festival in March and April, lukelewisbeers.com for that. Um, but anyway, on the way home from this gig, right, uh, Keelan... And uh, Whitey, Uncle Whitey, who's in the Patreon Discord, you may know him. Uh, he's the guy who helps out with all the tech stuff and all of the uh, all that kind of rubbish. Here, um, we decide to go home together with with Phoebe, Keelan's girlfriend. Yes, he has one. Uh, <laughs> despite having no fucking license, what a loser! No license loser over here. What a dork! How old are you? Twenty-two. Pathetic, right? Uh, so. <laughs> We get in the car with Whitey. Now, uh, Keelan and Whitey together is just the worst combination ever. It's They're just absolute menaces to each other, and their goal is to be as annoying to each other as possible. And uh, anyone around them who gets caught in the crossfire. Great example. Uh, we get in Whitey's car. We're in the middle of the CBD. We leave the parking lot. <laughs> Keelan winds down the window and screams... At the top of his lungs. And I want you to know that I'm not exaggerating. He screams as loud as he can, middle of the night, Melbourne CBD, starts screaming, help, help, I've been kidnapped, help. And everyone is so concerned. Obviously, because someone's screaming from the back of a black sedan, help, help, I've been kidnapped, ah, help, help. As loud as he can, everyone in the city, everyone on that street just stares at the car and sees like a much older guy really terrified while a much younger guy is screaming, help, help. And I'm turning around, like looking at Keelan going, shut the fuck up, shut up, which doesn't make it better. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, dude. There's rapid response units in the city. You know, there's unmarked, terrifying looking vans with like police that are less police, more guys who couldn't make it into the UFC because they fought too dirty. You know, that's, that's that division of the police, the anti-terror unit. And Keelan's fucking screaming, help, help, I've been kidnapped. And then just says to like one person much quieter, don't worry, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, and, and so then Whitey starts having a panic attack on the way home. So that was great. Um, another good one was we pull up to the petrol station uh, on the way home. <laughs> Everyone gets out. This is a great one. This, this, is, uh, this is actually this is a great one to try out on your friends. We're in the 7-Eleven. It's like uh, maybe midnight. We get in there and uh, we're all just looking at like snacks to get. And I go to Keelan very loudly, not yelling, but like, speaking very loudly, come on, dude, just pay for it. Don't, dude, come on, don't, wait, I'll pay for it. Don't fucking pocket it. Oh, man, I'm not, st uh, look, do that by yourself. And then I just c continue browsing on as normal. Like, just really loudly chastise your friend for stealing when they're at the back of the store and just watch them get searched on the way out. It's a really, really good one. Uh, and then, yeah, the, all the way up to the counter, I'm like, pay for it, come on, dude. And then uh, Keelan gets the thing, the item, the one thing that he had, and I said, "Dude, pay for all of it. <laughs> Don't just pay for one thing. Pay for all of it." And now, and now the guy behind the counter is like, "Is is this guy just fucking robbing me?" It's really great, really embarrassing for your friend. Highly recommend you give that one a spin on on your next night out. Just frame your friend for stealing, and then gaslight them when they say they're not. Really, really good stuff. Um, what else did we do? We broke into your house yeah. when we got there because you didn't bring your your key home. Uh, I had to climb in your bathroom window. So firstly, the first idea was, oh, I'll give Keelan a boost. And then Keelan goes, no, 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 you're way lighter than me. I'll give you a boost. <laughs> right? Now, that was a good idea until it came for me to actually fit myself into the window. 
because yes, I'm lighter than you, so the lift up was much easier. But my six foot eight body trying to squeeze into like a small rectangular bathroom window, I almost gave myself a hernia. Like really, I felt like a contortionist. And I just absolutely smashed all of Phoebe's pot plants that were sitting on the mantle. Uh, and then and then there was just glass and dirt all in your bathroom. She was very upset. Who had to clean that up? That's good. I didn't. Yeah. Really good stuff. Can we talk about your neighbours? Probably not. Yeah? Keelan's neighbours are disabled. They're a beautiful family. Beautiful family. Right. I've met them. Beautiful, lovely, triggered by loud noises. <laughs> Sets them off like no one's business, right? If there's one thing that'll set this family off, it's loud noises. Keelan one time sneezed in his own house <laughs> and next door sounded like Ukraine for 40 minutes, <laughs> right? So we pull up to Keelan's house to pick him up uh, Rosie, not knowing this, goes, hold down the horn. Whitey holds down the horn, ruin their night for sure, 100%. Really good stuff. Uh, and I don't think your girlfriend screaming, my pot plant, my pot plant, at like 1 a.m. would have helped either. So you're the worst neighbour uh, and I'm a terrible friend. And that's how, that's how the world works, guys. Um, you know what else works? Fucking manscaped.com. Give me this, give me this, this box. I got a little box. In, in the mail. Don't display my address either. Um, thank you. This, I got a little pack. Oh, I think, oh, I fucking hope it's from Manscaped. Might be my vibrator. Um, I got a little box from manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the lawnmower 4.0. Actually, I think there's, uh, there's some ad stuff here that I'm supposed to read. Um, Oh, look at this. Manscaped now has beauty, regular, not beauty products, just regular cleaning stuff. They've got uh, uh, body spray. That's great. What else do they have? They have shampoo, two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Okay. Hey, what's wrong with shampoo and conditioner combined? It's good. Two-in-one. That's good. That's efficient. Yeah. That's, better than, <laughs> that's better than using two products. Yeah. And that's true. So don't you dare laugh at their two-in-one shampoo. Hey, there's nothing wrong with two-in-one. Some people are busy. They don't have time. They don't have room for two products. That's good. Right? They also, they also have uh, body wash. Well, there's nothing funny about body wash. There's nothing wrong with that. And this stuff's great. I've been told by the, by the, the company itself. Uh, lip balm. Oh, fancy. You know, I've never really used lip balm ever. I've got, but now, but now, thanks to Manscaped, I have three lip balms. Um, is this is this wise? Just opening a box from from some company and just spreading it on my lips? Uh, that's what she said. Um, we've got Manscaped lip balm. You know, I think they have a whole box of like just like everyday beauty product stuff. All right, I'm going to put this on. Hmm, <laughs> tastes like nothing. I suppose that's a good thing. Do you want li your lip balm to be uh, to be flavoured? Smells nice. That's good. See, this is the most honest review that you're ever going to get, guys, because I didn't know that what was in here. Oh, we've got deodorant as well. Roll on, gross. You use roll on. You don't use spray. I use spray. What does this smell like? Manscaped.com. Use code Spears for twenty percent off and free shipping. They also do ball bag trimmers. Cause this, can I? How do I spray this? Do I have to unlock it? Oh, it's like wet. Oh, shouldn't spray the dog. Hydrating, hydrating body spray. That smells nice. I don't think it's, it says body spray. I don't think I sprayed on my face. Hydrating body spray on hydration. Um, hold four inches away and spray evenly. Rub in lightly until absorbed. That smells really nice, guys. I mean, I'm going to have to try out this uh, this two-in-one shampoo and conditioner, which I'm sure is great, uh, and the body wash, which uh, I'm actually sure is great. Um, great. So thanks to Manscaped for, for all of that. Uh, and uh, definitely use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. The the new range of, uh, of uh, body wash and hair product 
Uh, that's that's actually really cool that they're kind of expanding their range. I do like that. The um, I haven't used any of this stuff yet. Obviously, I'll let you know next episode. But the the lawnmower 4.0 is really really great. I found one uh, in my in my storage that I thought it was in Hobart, so I couldn't use it for ages. I found one. My face is all trimmed up nice. Had this ugly neck beard going for ages, uh, and I use it on my ass too because I I multitask. Um, so yeah, which one first? Man, you know I'm a man of risk. Um, what else do we have here to talk about? Uh, I suppose it's time for miscellaneous bit at the end, um, isn't it? Miscellaneous bit at the end is the worst part of the podcast. It's the part where I answer questions uh, and life advice uh, sent in by you guys. If you would like uh, something to make the podcast, send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. That's podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, shoot it through to me. Okay. What do we have here? We have, uh, right, uh, we have destroying company property for a laugh. This is great. Uh, miscellaneous bit of the end is brought to you by Patreon. On Patreon, you get early access to all of my videos and you get the extended version of every episode of Spearhead Sunday. So after this episode, I'm going to continue on to do the Patreon exclusive one. Last week's Patreon exclusive is live. You can go and check it out now. There's a huge backlog of them. Check it out. Patreon, Loose Spears. You get it. Also, you get early access. Like we'll upload this one on Friday. So you get it super, super early. So, you know, I'm up, we might be fucking glass by then, judging by how things are going. So, you know, this episode may never make it public but patrons have heard it first hey mate my name is sam uh, i've been working for a company for a while now and we recently got a new boss she's been a massive cunt for a few months now just yelling at staff and not being able to deal with peak times at work she also has a very bad habit of habit of talking shit about staff members to other staff members uh, because i guess we don't talk to each other pretty stupid if you ask me yeah that's the the dumbest shit is when like management talks shit about other like employees below them to other employees below them. Like they're not just going to tell that person straight away. That's the dumbest shit. Um, Oi, how shit's rosy. Um, so anyway, no, she's great. Uh, so anyway, uh, she has a, she has a few cars that she uses to make deliveries. Only thing is she loves cheaping out on these cars. They barely run, look like shit, and most importantly, the drivers, including myself, never feel safe in them. At the time, my boss had picked up a new company car. This is going to be a really relatable tale for Keelan. Um, at the time, my boss had picked up a new company car that was especially dodgy. It would literally shake and drivers would refuse to drive it due to how unsafe they felt in it. Well, at least they can drive. At least they've got their bloody license. <laughs> Turns out my boss would have a nasty habit of talking shit behind my back and especially to my friends. One time she even did it while I was on a group call with them. What an idiot. She didn't know that I was on the phone and kept going, which really pissed me off. She frequently complains about me, uh, about to me about nobody telling her issues about the company cars, despite the fact that I tell her any issues I find with them and she dismisses me like it's nothing. So you've complained about these cars, she's done nothing. One day, I was already angry before I even went to work, and when I got there, she was doing the regular, yelling at people for no reasons, that kind of stuff. A few hours later, it was quieter in store and just a few employees there. I was talking with my boss and informed her that something was wrong with the company car, to which she responded, you always have a bitch about the cars no one else does just because it's not as fancy as your car. I told her that the car was overheating and the motor would seize if she didn't do anything about it. I was annoyed to say the least and was coincidentally driving the car later that day. I know a little bit about cars and I know if the car has no coolant, it will die. So I may or may not have hurried along the process of killing it by pulling off the coolant lines and driving the car on the red line for the rest of the night. Awesome. Once the line popped off, I warned my boss again, hoping she would listen, but she told me to fuck off. Simply put, the car coincidentally died the day, day after from overheating. Apparently she was bitching about me to one of my friends again and saying she doesn't want to tell me that I was right and didn't want to give me the satisfaction of knowing that I was right. That was a few months ago and she still does the same thing. My friends and myself have also been chipping away at the other one by frying tyres from doing handbrake turns and burnouts. <laughs> Stuff like that. But if she annoys me too much, something else might happen. Uh, thanks for reading. Have a shit one. I hope you cut the brakes of her car. Um, that's great. I highly approve of that that behaviour. If uh, if someone won't upgrade the, the equipment in your workplace, break it. That's not you something to do here. It's not here, all right? I can't afford to replace that chair. Um, 
You need a new computer. Well, man, maybe you should have a shower while working. See what happens. Uh, no, I think, look, if, if something's like unsafe, like a car, and they're forcing you to use it, then yeah, fucking pull the coolant out and kill it. You, sa- you literally may have saved many lives doing that. I, that's great. I feel like that, that sucks. Like if a company is just going to talk shit about you and give you unsafe equipment, then yeah, don't, don't use it. Or better yet, make sure that no one can use it. In a safe way. An illegal way, of course. That's just a joke. I'm, I'm only joking there. That whole story was fake. Um, it wasn't. Right. That's a great little email. What else do we have here? Uh, here we go. Skinny. and Can't put on weight. Hey, Lewis. Just call me Louie. Uh, I'm not the tallest in the world, but I look anorexic with how skinny I am. I know you've given advice in the past... Uh, give an advice on how to put on weight, but nothing has been working so far. From a long time, time from a long time listener from Canada, have a shit one. Hope you're not in those bloody fucking convoys, mate. Um, yeah, look, putting on weight is uh, it's uh, difficult, but it's simple. If you're not putting on weight, you're not eating enough. That's the answer. You don't eat enough. If you think you eat enough, you don't. Track how much you actually eat a day, every day for a week. Write it down. Don't lie to yourself. Get an app like MyFitnessPal. Track your calories on a normal week and you will see that you don't eat enough. That's why you're not putting on weight. You need to eat at least 500 calories over your maintenance if you're a very skinny person to put on weight. Uh, Honestly, mass gainer shakes uh, saved my ability to do it. I cannot eat enough. I struggle so much to eat like uh, uh, at a maintenance level uh, that... Uh, there's no way that I would ever be able to eat over that. I just can't. It's not something that I can do. And a lot of people are like, oh, do, do, do you, or you just need to eat more food. Do, these shakes are bullshit. Sure, eating more food will be better, but it's not realistic, all right? I can't fucking, I'm six foot eight. I can't fucking spend $120 a week on the amount of high quality, high protein food that I would need to make that's also high calorie and I'm eating large amounts of it, so I go through it quick. It's a hassle. I have a full-time job. It's next to impossible. I can make one meal a week for myself that's like meal prepped, you know? Like I can cook a week's worth of things, one meal, and then the other few meals I just like make on the spot. I can't have my whole fucking fridge full up of like four different Tupperware containers for four different meals that I need to have every single day. That's unrealistic. So I get around that with milk, and mass gaining shakes. Max's super size, bro, 900 to 1,000 calories in one shake, banger. Do that. I have like one or two of those a day, and that brings me up to over it, all right? That's my recommendation to you, bro. Like, milk is huge. Uh, and also just like make a pasta with heaps of mints or something that I've been eating actually recently because I got, got kind of sick of pasta. Uh, I found like... Uh, like easy two minute two minute rice in those little packets that are already seasoned and then I just put like 250 grams of tuna in that and then I put like fucking Japanese mayonnaise QP in that and that's fucking awesome that's like 800 calories in a meal that's really good stuff really easy to make very cheap and that's enough calories I mean there's no vegetables in it which is ideal ideally uh, not ideal you would want to put fucking heat up some broccoli or in the microwave or something that's really easy that's what i would do with that i would also maybe put some fucking egg in it i guess would also help but yeah man like that's putting on weight unfortunately is very simple uh and the answer is uh, i'm sorry but it's eat more you're not eating enough uh that's the truth you don't eat enough. Everyone, everyone, and this is me included, I used to think, oh, I'm not putting on weight even though I'm eating lots of food. Just because you don't feel hungry because you're full doesn't mean you're actually eating a lot of food. You, the stomach, this is how people get fat, right? They eat a lot and their stomach expands. So then they're, the point at which they're full is further down the road so they can eat more food before they become full. And that's how they become fat. They keep eating so much food that their stomach expands and then they become more hungry and they never fill it. That's how someone gets fat. We have the opposite problem. We don't do that. So our stomach is small and expects less food. What we have to do is do that. And it's not natural. You know, we just have the opposite problem. 
unfortunately, if you're fat, the answer is you're eating too much food, all right? And uh, that's a simple answer, but it's really difficult to do, to get out of that habit, to to not give in to those cravings. Skinny people, I think, have the uh, exact opposite problem. I never feel hungry. I hate eating. I don't enjoy... I enjoy cooking a little bit, but to, to me, mostly it's a chore. I would rather hyper-focus on something uh, like comedy or editing or writing or... Uh, get so exhausted at 4.30 p.m. that I fall asleep on the floor for 20 minutes. That's what I'm doing. I'm a busy man. Uh, so I find it very difficult to eat. Uh, but I do that shit anyway, and I keep track of my calories to make sure that I hit my meals. So, yeah, you got to make it easy for yourself. Try and meal prep where you can. Uh, but really, there's some great meals out there. Fucking uh, cook up half a... Half 500 grams of pasta with one kilo of kangaroo mints. And you have yourself five meals a day that are 800 calories. Easy. That's easy as shit, bro. Uh, Cook up fucking Uncle Ben's 90-second rice with 250 grams of tuna. That's an 800-calorie meal there, bro. Put some avocado in it and some mayonnaise. It tastes amazing, right? The seasoning is done for you. It's not going to change your culinary experience and your palate and blow your mind, but it's enough and it's easy and you've got to do it. And something that you can eat every single day. That's my advice to you is you just need to, you know, stop being a bitch, eat your food. And if you're really struggling like me, get like a, a, a mass gain protein shake that just has a lot of protein and a fuckload of calories and you'll be fine. I'm putting on like a, a kilo a week at this rate. I'm also going to gym uh, like three to five times a week. So that helps. But uh, yeah, man, the answer is you're not listening to my advice, which is eat more. Uh, Great. Cool. And uh, if you're a fat cunt, just do the opposite of everything I said. All right. Thank you very much for listening. That's the end of uh, the podcast. I'm going to continue on uh, for Patreon here right now. So jump over to Patreon, Lewis Spears. There's a Discord. There's a bunch of benefits. And there's a whole backlog of uh, uh, podcast episodes that are only available on Patreon. So you can go and listen to that. And uh, until then, I will talk to you next Sunday. I hope you have a shit one. Bye.